I just like to finish up on the on the governance committee. We have important uh, issues with regard to e equal opportunity and sexual harassment. The committee considered the text of policy statements regarding equal employment opportunity and sexual harassment. The committee recommends unanimously that the plenary board adopt the revised EEO and sexual harassment policy statements which are set forth in the draft record of decisions. Is there any discussion uh, on this matter? Yes, well, I asked in the meeting this morning, maybe Mr. Comer has the answer now. He said that we, uh, uh, this statement reflects the vast majority of the recommendations that were contained in the discussion that we had at the Governance Committee meeting back in March. Uh, have you had time to check the record and see if really all of them were or what was left out? Because we discussed that about 20 minutes this morning earlier. Yes, uh, Governor, actually I did go back and check the record and speak with um, uh, people who had who had uh, were at the meeting and transcribing the uh, the discussion, and uh, all of your changes uh, were uh, were incorporated. The only thing that was not incorporated, it was the subject of a dis of the discussion. There was your suggestion that um, something about union activity should be included in the equal employment opportunity statement, and that that was not included. But other than that, all of your changes. All right, were the equal opportunity. Okay. Well, why don't we go to that? Why don't we do the one we all agree on first? There are actually two of them. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion that we adopt the uh, draft policy statement on sexual harassment and then the equal op employment opportunity issue we could, is a separate All right. One. Okay. Is there a second on adopting the sex sexual harassment policy? All those? And let me say, Mr. Chairman, I think um, the, the, uh, under your leadership, the uh, time that the committee spent, as opposed to a rubber stamp pro forma approval, resulted in improvement to an important issue that Congress and I think most Americans would agree is a serious issue and we now have a better policy than what we had previously so I'm happy to see us move forward and I think we can take pride in this. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's agreed to. Um, the next one deals with equal opportunity. Right. Is there discussion on this subject? Well, my question would be, my question on unions was to protect people for belonging to a union or engaging in union activities that they wouldn't be penalized. Why would that not be in here? Why wouldn't we let people, I mean, why would we even remotely suggest that being a member of a union was a, could penalize you? Um, I guess the short answer is that um, no, no one is saying that being a member of the union subjects anyone to a penalty. It's just that this equal employment opportunity is, is governed by a different section of the United States Code, and there's a separate body of law dealing with union activity. So the labor and employment experts who are on our staff and others that we've consulted kind of unanimously agree that it's just a different it's 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 oranges, and we're talking about apples here. It's it's not that so th this this policy statement is just about equal employment opportunity. But it does no harm to include, say, that you won't be penalized because you belong to a union. No harm is done. And I can assure you there are some people of AFGE who are concerned about it. They may be wrongly concerned and, and not be valid, but, you know, if you have a concern, you have a, if you put it in here, what damage is done? Other than some lawyers come up with a reason not to do it. No, I'm asking him. I was going to support your position. All right, fine. Well, I, I think you could. No I think you could easily add. You could easily add in here. Um, nothing in here shall be deemed to um, uh, conflict with the protections afforded to individuals and unions under the National Labor Relations Act. Well, Mr. Chairman, for purposes of getting this before you, I would move the board up, make a motion that we adopt the equal opportunity statement. Hopefully there'll be a generous second, and then I would move it be amended. But okay. first of all, we have to have a motion to adopt it. Okay. Now I would move to take Mr. Corn's. Uh, you know, the news out of days many may be the Corn Ash uh, Alliance, which will shock the hell out of everybody. At least, huh? uh, <laughs> well, if we, <laughs> um, but okay. I would I would take I would add that we add a sentence that membership in a if I'm phrasing this right, uh, Steve, uh, in a union uh, 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 
Would well, not be penalized? Well, well, would, you know, would not result in any penalty. Yes, Paul. And I make oh. that as a motion. Okay. I, quite frankly, I don't know if it's okay. Uh, and and I, I don't feel that it makes sense for this board uh, or even myself to suggest that any change to the, this policy to talk about unions or union activity, I would suggest uh, that rather than adopting that as part of the, that the board, my recommendation is for the board to adopt this policy as it is and maybe for the governance committee to take up that issue separately and if necessary and if and with, with, the, with, the, with the input from experts in the field and if it makes sense under those circumstances to propose an amendment to this policy. I because I just, because quite frankly, I just don't know the implications of what you're of, of what you're saying, so it's hard for me to know if, if it's okay or not well, we okay or what makes it. sense. So what you're saying is uh, we haven't adopted, it, but, yeah, but in committee we adopted it, and and staff huge. for whatever reason right. didn't include it. Not the amendment. And what I'm saying is, if this is put I, in, I mean, is there an objection, Victor, uh, Governor Ash, to referring this matter, the amendment to the governance committee for further review? Do you object to that? Well, when will the governance consider it? I mean, at its it next meeting, I hope, and well, well, I hope it will be in October. I hope so. That will be my intention. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with this. Well, I think what he's saying is that he doesn't. I mean, there may be maybe implications here. I think no one wants to to penalize anybody for union activity. So the question is, how is the appropriate way to to reflect that in our policies? So I'm. I would suggest that this come to the governance committee and we will consider either creating a new policy or revising this policy in that respect after it's been looked at by advisors and experts. Well, let me ask you this, if we do that. Mr. Colmer, you, 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 you have a busy workload coming up. Are you able to get back with a thoughtful uh, answer in the next 30 days or are you going to need two months? In other words, I, I'm, I'm... No problem, Governor. All right. No problem. And so you're not necessarily opposed to this. You just want further research. I'm not opposed to the, the, the concept. I just think that it, it's prudent for us to bring this up as a, that up as a separate matter, right. adopt this policy, and then bring that up as a separate matter if, if it makes sense to make those revisions at that well, time. What I, what I don't understand is, and I hope in the future, as I said this morning, I was the main person who talked about all this, and no one ever came back to me and shared with me that the attorneys had a problem on the union issue until right now. We could have saved ourselves about an hour of discussion had several weeks ago <clears throat> you called. But that's water over the dam. I can't undo it. What I am saying is, if and this isn't you, this is attorneys who deal with labor law, come up with some reason as to why this statement shouldn't occur. Will they be here to give us their views, or how are we going to be able to explore their reasons? I mean, obviously, they've taken an initial stand against it, because we agreed to it at the Governance Committee in March, and due to these uh, unknown attorneys, it's now out. So now we're suggesting to put it back in, and now we need more time to go back to these people. Go 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 Governor Ash, uh, I'm sorry, but... Betsy Parrish, who's the head of our labor and employment practice, was at the March meeting. She voiced an objection to, to that. Uh, and um, to, the short answer to your short question, the short answer to your question is, yes, we will have labor and employment attorneys at the next governance committee uh, in force to answer all questions and we'll prepare any briefing materials that may be helpful to the, to well, the committee. Let me tell you this, and I'm chairman. Uh, I would uh, suggest the amendment that I offered be referred to the Governance Committee, and be cons and I hope the minutes will reflect this, uh, be considered at our October, I guess, 11 meeting. Okay. Equal opportunity policy be approved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Right. The motion's approved. The policy's approved. Um,